RimWorld is one of my most played games, and I stream it at least weekly at twitch.tv slash resorty, link in the description, tell a friend. Occasionally while I'm playing, a viewer will ask, hey resorty, how did you do that? Usually this question comes right after I've done some bit of RimWorld wizardry that the viewer didn't know was possible. In this video, I break the magician's code and show how these tricks are done. What this video won't teach you is the basics of base construction, or how to survive and thrive. There are no leech strats or killbox cheese builds here. Those will appear in other tutorial videos I'll be putting together in the coming months. This video instead reveals some tips and tricks I use to interact with the unmodded vanilla RimWorld UI. Most of these interactions aren't easy to stumble upon, and in many cases they're not at all explained in the tutorial or in the game. Nonetheless, these tips will be useful to speed up your gameplay interactions and deepen your understanding of this fantastic colony building simulation game. Newer players are likely to learn a lot from this video. Veteran Rimworlders, perhaps you'll pick something up too. If not, at least consider staying for the jokes. Let's get to the tips. Number one, reordering pawns. Your colonists are the game's foundation, which is why they're at the top of the screen. Characters are added to this listing as they join the colony, so the farthest left has been on the team longest, while the rookies are at the far right. This ordering can be useful to see a colony's historical progression, but it isn't the only helpful sequence. Thus, a gift from me to you, a way to reorganize your colonists. Just hold down the right mouse button while dragging a colonist picture at the top of the screen, and ta-da! You can place them in whatever order you want. Common orderings include... Fighting styles and skills. Shooters to the left of me, meleeers to the right. Ordered strongest to weakest. Ranks. Nobles on the left, proles and slaves on the right. Help them remember who's boss. Alphabetized for the organization freaks among us. And then there's solving anagrams. When life gives you lemonade, make... L. Damon. Er. Number two, speedily moving between pawns. Say you've barely survived a ridiculous raid. Bob's been blasted, Frank's fainted, and Mary's a mess. Dr. Medic Guy on the scene. But where to start? Call Richard, Meredith, and Bailey. It's triage time. You of course want Dr. Medic Guy to start with the colonist in the worst shape but choosing each character, pulling up their health tab, and evaluating before moving on to the next one is so many clicks. Here's a way to go slightly faster. Once you have a character's health tab up, you can see the next character's health page by pushing the period or comma key on a standard keyboard. If you prefer, these keys are the ones with the crocodiles hunting for the bigger and smaller numbers. I also use this shortcut to look through colonists' gear, evaluate social relationships or character traits, and quickly decide who deserves the best weapons and rooms. Anytime you want to quickly shift through your colonists, this is the way to do it. Number 3. Managing the Work Tab For newer players, the Work Tab is one of the game's more intimidating screens. On new colonies, the game limits the terror by automatically assigning priorities. This works well enough initially, but eventually players have to take the reins and turn on manual prioritization to ensure colony efficiency. Other videos explain how to think about setting priorities. Here, though, are a few ways to interact with the work screen. First, a tip for figuring out which character is best at a given skill. If you want, you could go to each character's bio page, look at the relevant skill, say um, crafting, and compare it to the next character's stats, one after another. This is time consuming. A slightly faster way is to mouse over each colonist's priority box on the work tab. Faster still is double clicking the skill's name. This immediately orders the characters from best to worst in respect to that skill. Second, let's assume you want to ensure every colonist contributes to some task. For example, there may be an emergency and you need all hands on deck. A good example of this situation is an out-of-control fire. 
Time for absolutely everyone to come together to cut a colony-preserving fire break. Rather than clicking through and increasing each colonist's priority one at a time, bit by bit, you can mass increase by holding down the left shift key and clicking on the skill's name. Contrarywise, you can decrease everyone's priority by holding down the same key and right-clicking instead. Along with the earlier mentioned emergency scenarios, this interaction can be useful for ensuring everyone is taking care of those most important ordinary tasks, firefighting and basic work, like flipping switches. Perhaps you didn't know that basic work includes switch flipping, thinking instead that basicness was having a pH greater than 7 or wearing Ugg boots while drinking pumpkin spice lattes. To find out what each job entails, you can mouse over each skill's name, which shows the job it controls, as well as how these jobs interact. With respect to cooking, for instance, working at the stove comes before butchering. Knowing these priorities can be helpful in understanding why work isn't getting done around the base. This page also shows you how to increase and decrease any skill's rank with various shifts and clicks and now you know why I gave you that tip before this one. Number four, activating self-tending. You know what's really annoying? Early in a single character playthrough, before you've had a chance to recruit someone else, your hero gets sick or wounded. Then you gotta watch them bleed out or cough their way into the grave while you hope their wounds somehow seal up like wolverines. If only there were another way. But first, oh boy, it's an unexpected installment of Big Nerd Time. On today's episode, we look to the Bible's Luke 4.23, where Jesus is quoted as saying, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Or in Latin, medice cura te ipsum. Or in Greek, which I have no idea how to pronounce, this. Iatre therape san se alton. Thanks, Noms. The stated proverb significantly predates its biblical context. In the 5th century BCE, the Greek tragedian Aeschylus in his Prometheus Unbound writes, Like an unskilled doctor fallen ill, you lose heart and cannot discover by which remedies to cure your own disease. This earlier phrasing emphasizes the practical, educational failing of a physician who doesn't care for their own medical needs. Such an error can be understood on moral terms, too, as a kind of hypocrisy, expressed in the idea of the pot calling the kettle black, or as in another biblical imperative, this from the book of Matthew, judge not lest ye be judged. All of this is to say, Doctor colonists who refuse to heal themselves are unchristian hypocrites. Luckily, there's a quick button to push that makes application of medical treatment to oneself possible and for us to send them back on the path of the straight and narrow. It's on the health tab. Pushing this little red X turns it into a green check mark and then the physician will heal thyself, though at a significant penalty. Their tending is only 70% of its normal efficacy when applied to themselves. That, though, is surely better than nothing. Of course, this tip won't help you at all if you've started with a character who refuses to do medical work in principle. They, though, probably deserve what they get. Number five, navigating the eye page. Every object in the game, including your colonists, has an information page reached by clicking this eye, which provides an exhaustingly overwhelming amount of detail about the object's features. If you have any questions about how different items compare to one another, say the damage of this axe versus that sword, this is the place to answer them. But there's a lot of other helpful material in these pages too. For example, it can be useful to compare the cover efficiency of different items before you decide where to cower while taking on raiders. Even more helpfully, a colonist's eye page allows you to skip mathematical calculations. 
Take, for instance, a dire situation in which a colonist has developed an infection, like our poor friend, ow darn it. The right person to tend to her must be Dr. Howard. Look at that skill level, it's maxed out. Surely he's better at medicine than this chump here, Timmy, with his minuscule three medical levels. But unfortunately, there's more to successful healing than just titles and skills. For example, no arms, yes problems. Or is your doctor bleeding from his head? He may have things on his mind other than medicine. For example, his brain matter. In this case, surprisingly, the good doctor is missing both eyes and one arm. Whoops. Maybe he's still better at the job though, because the difference between three skill level and 20 is so substantial. Ow darn it needs immediate help though, so how do you quickly do the math to weigh all of a colonist's pros and cons and figure out who's best suited for the task? Put away your slide ruler and TI-84, numbers nerd, the game has you covered. Just pull up each character's eye page and scroll down to medical tend quality. Mousing over this line will show you exactly how likely your doctor is to succeed, as well as what factors determine the outcome. Sometimes this calculation will lead to surprises. To return to our earlier characters, the much more skilled Dr. Howard is easily eclipsed by the less experienced but fuller of body Timmy. Perhaps Howard's doctorate degree is in philosophy. If you want to min-max your playthrough, you can consult the information page before making every decision in your game. Want the fastest howler? Better check out movement speed. Whose weapon is best to take that shot? To the range accuracy lines on the weapon page. And so on. It can be overwhelming to min-max in this way, so more reasonably, I compare eye pages when I know that a job's failure will have significant consequences on my playthrough, especially surgeries and crafting with rare materials. Nonetheless, it can be fun to poke around the eye page to better understand your characters, your items, and basically everything else. Number 6. Mass Applying Settings Though part of RimWorld's charm is the character's variety, you'll occasionally want them to all fall in line. Who cares about their predilections to cannibalism or refusal to do carpentry when there's a raid? Instead, everybody needs to get into the base's safe area to get ready to fight. And when it's time for emergency field medicine, maybe it's okay if everyone's wounds are treated not with the finest of medicine, but instead with just dirt and spit. But, as you can see, that's a lot of clicking. So here's a quick tip. On nearly every RimWorld menu, you can drag the top character's status down through all the other colonists too. This is particularly useful when assigning restrictions for clothing, foods, drugs, but it can also save time on lots of other pages too. Insofar as my current mouse is rated for only 50 million clicks, Every single one I save keeps my shelling out for replacement a little farther down the line. Number seven, avoiding infestations. This tip is a little less UIE than the others, but it's something viewers consistently ask about. How do I know where infestations will spawn? In the current version of RimWorld, this will change slightly with the biotech expansion's pollution mechanics, Infestations spawn under only two conditions, deep drill mining or an overhead mountain roof. If you're not deep drilling and there's no overhead mountain roof tile available, it is not possible for infestations to spawn, period. Given that you know when your colonists are using a deep drill, an obvious question, how do you know where the overhead mountain roofs are? In the game's bottom right hand corner, there's an icon that looks like a little house. Pushing this brings up a representation of the map's roofing. Bright green spots are roofs that can be removed by your constructors, either colonist built ones or pre-made thin mountain roofs. A dark green color means the roof cannot be removed. There's only one kind of roof like this, the overhead mountain. If you do not dig out these dark green spots, you will not get infestations. 
If you dig them out or fill the tile with a wall, you will not get infestations. Promise. If you really don't want to deal with bugs, you can turn off infestations entirely while setting up a new playthrough. But perhaps you do want to fight them. Eventually. After all, these bugs can be a great source for meat for your animals with kibble making. If that's your plan though, to get to them down the road, make sure to expose overhead mountain tiles intentionally, not accidentally. Number 8. Queuing Colonist Jobs Generally speaking, RimWorld pawns function autonomously. You assign tasks in the abstract. Someone make me a table. Or, perhaps in the words of Good King Wenceslas, Bring me flesh and bring me wine and bring me pine logs hither. With a work task set, some unspecified colonist gets to work on it, following the arcane system of the work tab and proximity. But what if you want that table made now, regardless of whatever other flesh fetching the colonists have to do? In that case, you can override the automatic work queue by selecting a colonist, right-clicking on the blueprint, and ordering them to get to work. Of course, a colonist will only accept their assignment if they're set to do the relevant job on the work tab. No plumbers are allowed on electrical union job sites. What, though, if you want something more complex than just making a table, like bringing the good king's flesh, wine, and pine logs? You could wait for the colonists to haul them all eventually, or you could order them to do all the bringing right away. This is accomplished by following the prior instructions to assign the first job, select colonist, right click on the first item, and give the order. Then, while holding down the shift key, right click on the next item and give another order. And do it again, and again, and again. I find job queuing most useful for ensuring my doctors address colonist injuries in order of seriousness. It can also help focus constructors on finishing one job when you've put down far too many blueprints. And in cases where you need to do a lot of hauling, say when you first set up your base, you can ensure that your haulers pick up the most important items first. To my knowledge, there's no limit to how many jobs you can queue, though your worker will attempt to complete all of them serially, potentially ignoring their needs as they strive to meet your insatiable demand for more and more flesh. Number 9. Banishing Have you ever been at a really pleasant party, surrounded by people you really like, and you're all chilling and enjoying yourselves? And then there's that one guy. He's probably telling stories about how great he is, or he's hitting on all the women, or repeatedly offering to play achy, breaky heart on his guitar. Whichever way, the night would be perfect, except for that guy. Wouldn't it be amazing if there were a way to just get rid of him? RimWorld playthroughs have a lot in common with social gatherings and occasionally you'll wind up with a colonist who's basically that one guy and is just spoiling the mood. Maybe they're a misogynist or abrasive. Perhaps they've been wounded in some way where they're no longer useful in their task and are now just sucking up all the valuable resources. Or did this guy somehow friendly fire your best pawn, quote unquote, accidentally? Whichever way, it's time to vote him off the island. RimWorld lets you do this with the Banish button. You show them the door. This is right next to the Name Change button on the Colonist bio page. But where the Banish colonists will greedily take along the items they're wearing, and everyone else in the colony will be bummed out for a while by the awkward scene of them collecting their jacket and mopily walking out the front door. Nevertheless, before too long, the remaining colonists will be glad you got rid of the troublemaker and the party can go back to its prior excellence. So, there you have it. Nine UI interactions you might not have known about before now. Did you learn anything new in this video? Or is there anything I left out? Favorite tricks you have that maybe I don't know? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, I almost forgot. There's one more quick UI feature to mention. 
If you look just below this video, there's a button you can push. It's labeled subscribe. Be sure to check that one out, winky face. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again real, real soon.